Following these tips will increase your approval odds for your high functioning autism and or your history of your IEP 504 plan medical waiver request by a whopping 93%. I don't know if that's true, but it sounds good. But with that being said, I am frequently asked if a high functioning autistic person and or if someone who has had a history of an IEP 504 plan, can they apply to the United States Army with a medical waiver because so many recruiters ghost them after finding out their history during their pre-screening process, or they tell them outright that they're not qualified and it's Unfortunately, not uncommon for applicants like these to eventually give up all hope in making their dreams to serve a reality. Now, these types of medic waivers are extremely tricky and as always, it'll primarily be dependent on your diagnosis, severity, history, your records and more. And my hope in this video is to help you gather all the necessary information, insights and tips to optimize your approval odds for this said medical waiver. If you have been diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder at an earlier age, but have outgrew it on or before your 14th birthday and or continue to live your best life without these types of accommodations, that's a slam dunk, easy peasy waiver. But if after the age of 14 years old, this is where the challenges begin. And if you do what I tell you to do in this video, you'll be in the best possible position to receive the best favorable decision on your medical waiver request. Awesome. Can I ask you something? If you had one shot, one opportunity to seize everything that you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it or let it slip? So with or without autism, here are the documents and the insights that you'll need to secure your medical waiver. Starting with your IEP 504 plan, get a copy of this. It needs to state your accommodations, whether you had extra time on the test, placed in a nice quiet room, or worse yet, which will count more against you, are like getting the questions right out loud to you. And if you were like fully embedded into a special education class in small groups uh, for your blocks of instruction, which will be detrimental to your overall waiver at that point. But with that being said, you're also gonna need a copy, your official high school or col and or college transcript. The higher the grades, the better, right? So in college, were you still on your IEP or 504 plan? Are your grades better? Were they average? But at the very best, you were passing, correct? Also, you're gonna need a letter from the Dean's office verifying that you had no or minor disciplinary or behavioral issues. Best case scenario is that you've had zero, no in or out school suspensions, write-ups, detentions, or any other major issues. You will need to obtain three character references. And the point of this is to understand the total applicant concept, meaning that you need to get a letter from a teacher and or a professor in college a manager or supervisor when you were employed. And then I would say a third letter could be like a student or a work colleague to understand from the teachers to your supervisors to someone you work with, how were you as a, a student or an employee? Did how like, were there any limitations or restrictions? Did you perform uh, average or above average compared to everyone else in school or at work? Things of that nature, right? As previously described in one of my uh, medical waiver video guides, right? You need to obtain all your medical re records as discussed in that video, all right? Everything from the original diagnosis for autism, so on and so forth, to why you had to be in an IEP 504 plan. You're gonna need an updated evaluation of your from your autism specialist, right? You need to obtain an all clear letter as described in that video medical waiver guide. Now, this next thing is optional. And you have to understand that the more medical evidence that we have to support the narrative that you should be a good candidate to join the United States Army, try to get your own independent psych consultation conducted by a psychologist. So if you could pay out of pocket, if you can afford it, or if you can leverage your insurance, great, get that done. That shouldn't take you any more than one to two hours. All right. If they want to do more than that, then that is your choice. But at the very end, when you get disqualified from MEPS, they're going to schedule at minimum a psych consultation through a contracted psychologist through DOD, the Department of Defense. That's free of charge to you and no one should be charging you for that. But if you do get 
an independent site consultation, there is a cost of that, whatever your insurance costs or whatever you want to pay for that. But again, that is optional. Now, the goal is to prove that you are just as normal, for lack of a better phrase, as any other average human being, and that would be just as valuable as an asset as the next person. So what you should expect at MEPS is that you're going to have to complete the ASVAB test unassisted, no IAP 504 plan accommodations of any sort. So no calculators, no ChatGPT, no Google, nothing, just you, your brain, a pencil and the paper. Okay. You're also going to have to complete the medical exam and hopefully you meet the rest of the medical procurement standards. Expect to get permanently or temporarily disqualified by the MEPS CMO, which is the chief medical officer who will then schedule that psych consultation and maybe another one to sit down with an autism specialist. Once those consultations are com conducted and completed, those results will then be sent back to the CMO for a review. Once MEPS CMO reviews those, it will close out your medical status at MEPS. And at that point is when your recruiter can submit a waiver to their respective branch surgeon general who will assess and decide upon whether or not your medical waiver is going to get approved. They can also deny it and they will not allow you to appeal a denial unless you have new supporting medical evidence for them to review. You can't just you know, resubmit just because you got the answer that you weren't expecting or desired. Okay. So with that being said, make sure that you check out my video medical waiver guide right there. You will understand the insights, the steps, and have that expectation of what you should be expecting just in case your recruiter is not effectively communicating the entire process. With that being said, thank you so much. May the waiver guides forever be in your favor. See you in the next one. Team Swartz signing out. Can you meet, can you meet,